Hey everyone, today we're going to learn about how to clean up your RSpec tests by removing duplication. Now, there's three main ways that you can remove duplication from your RSpec specs. One is by extracting some of the setup code into methods and then just calling those methods. The second way is to use before blocks and before hooks. And the third way is to use let. So let's cover each of those in a quick example. Our example is going to consist of a sandwich class. So we'll make a file called sandwich and then we'll make a class called sandwich. Okay, let's save that for now. Then what we need to do is run rspec dash dash init. This will create an rspec directory for us where we can put a spec file for this sandwich class. So let's create that right now. We'll call it sandwich underscore spec dot rb and then we'll describe first we'll require actually the sandwich file. So we'll go out of the directory and then sandwich.rb. And then we will describe this class. So we'll describe the sandwich class. And we'll have a few contexts. So we're going to follow TDD. So before we write anything in this sandwich class, we're going to we're going to write some specs. So we'll say context uh, when the sandwich should be vegan. Okay, and then we'll write a second context when the sandwich should not be vegan. Okay, and now we'll write three cases for each context. So we'll say it should not have meat. And we'll just leave it empty for now. And we'll say it should not have, what else shouldn't it have? Cheese. And then the third one we'll say it should uh, should not have mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Okay. And then we're going to write the exact three uh, tests down here, but this time it should have those three things. So it should have meat. It should have cheese. And it should have mayonnaise. Okay. So now that we have our specs. Uh, outlined. Let's go ahead and fill all of these it statements out. So we'll say, what do we want to have happen here? Well, we need to create a sandwich first, right? So we'll say sandwich, and then we'll say sandwich, which dot new, and then we'll pass in a few things. So um, we don't have our sandwich initializer set up yet, but we'll just pretend that we do. So let's pretend the first argument is um, meat. So We'll say false to meat, and then we'll say uh, the second argument is if you want cheese, we'll say false to cheese, and then we'll say the third argument is a, an array of condiments. So we'll say uh, lettuce and uh, tomato and a mustard. Okay, so we've created our sandwich, and now we want to expect certain things about the sandwich. So we should expect that the sandwich uh, dot meat and we expect that to equal false. Okay, so this is what we've done. Now, if we want to do this test, if it has cheese down here, we'd have to create another sandwich. So we'd have to pretty much copy this line right here, put it down, and then we'd have to expect sandwich dot cheese dot two equal false, etc. And the same thing for this mayonnaise right here. So you can start to see that duplication is coming into the picture because uh, all of these specs, so one, two, three, all of these specs are actually uh, creating a sandwich and it's creating the same looking sandwich each time. So we could actually extract some of that out into a method or a let block or a before hook that would do this for us. So let's go ahead and finish this one spec and then we will extract these uh, sandwich initializations into a shared uh, before hook. So we'll say we expect the sandwich dot, uh, let's see, what should we call it? Condiments uh, dot to not include, and then mayonnaise. Okay, um, let's go ahead and run these specs just to test it out. So we'll run our spec right here, and you see we get six examples, three failures, three pending. So our three pending are just these three because they don't have a body, so they're pending specs. And our three failures are these, and the reason they're failing is because 
Uh, first off, we don't even have an initialization for our sandwich, so that's probably one of the reasons they're failing. Um, so let's go up here and it says, wrong number of arguments given, three expected, zero. So let's go fix that. We'll go into here and we'll say uh, initialize, and then we'll say meat, cheese, and condiments, and we'll give the condiments just a default value. Um, so once we pass in meat, cheese, and condiments, we just have to set those as properties on the sandwich. So I can say self dot meat uh, equals meat. And this will make more sense in a second. I'll add an adder accessor at the top here equals cheese. And then self dot condiments equals condiments. And up here, we'll add those three adder accessors. Accessors. So we'll have one for meat, one for cheese, and then one for condiments. Okay. So at this point, our uh, specs should pass. We might have uh, a few errors, but we'll test them. So yeah, we have six examples, zero failures, and three pending. So that's perfect. So our three ones for the vegan sandwich passed. And then our three ones for the uh, regular non-vegan sandwich uh, were just pending. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and fill these in. Actually, first, we're going to go and extract this logic into a let block. So we'll, we'll teach you let first. So let is a way to extract some of your setup code into a block and then that block only runs when uh, you need that um, variable. So it's like it's uh, kind of lazy. It won't actually run until you need that variable. There is a form of let that allows you that runs straight away. It's using an exclamation mark but we're not going to use that form of let right now. So how you do a let block is you just say let, and then right here you pass in a symbol, and this symbol becomes the name that you use to reference this variable. So we'll call it sandwich, and then you can pass in either a, a do end like this, you can do a block like that, or you can just um, use the curly braces, which I'm gonna use right here. Now in this let block, whatever is evaluated in this block, uh, the last thing that's evaluated, it will be saved in this variable. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to extract this logic right here and just put it into the let block. And then we can totally get rid of this sandwich variable in all three of these tests because let blocks are scoped to um, the highest context or describe or it statement that they're defined in. So because it's defined up in this context block, uh, all three of these its have access to this sandwich variable right here. So if we run these tests again, we should uh, still get three passing specs. So let's run our spec. Yep, and we get three passing specs. So as you can see, that already cleaned up these specs quite a bit. And not only did it clean them up, but it also gave us that added benefit of this isn't going to be um, executed until this sandwich variable is actually referenced. So, you know, if we were if we had a let block up here and we didn't run a test uh, that used that let block, uh, this code would never be executed, which is kind of nice to speed up your tests. So that's let. Hopefully you understood that. Um, now down here we're going to do a very similar thing, but this time we're going to use a before uh, before hook instead of the let block. So the let block is one way to do it, and a before hook is a different way to do it. So let's just set up these tests real quick. We'll say sandwich equals sandwich dot new, and now this time we do want meat. We do want cheese, and then we do want uh, mayonnaise in our condiments. So we'll just say tomato and then uh, mayonnaise. Okay, now if we expect sandwich.meat.2 be true, that should pass. And we can come down here and do a very similar thing, but just for the cheese. So I'm just gonna copy this put it right here and then just expect the cheese to be true and then finally we'll come down here and we'll paste that but instead of expecting it to be true we're expecting the condiments to include condiments to include and then mayonnaise okay so these should all pass now so we get six passing specs which is great but we have that same issue of instantiating a sandwich in every spec, so it's kind of messy. So in this case, we're gonna use a before block. So we'll say before, and then you can pass in different symbols to before. You can say after, um, 
or sorry, so there's an after each, and then there's a before each, which we're using. Um, and then you can also pass in different arguments to before and after uh, to change how it, when it runs. But right now we're just gonna do each. So that means before each example, run the code that's in here. So we'll say before each do, and then in here, we're just gonna say sandwich, we're gonna make a sandwich. Um, the one thing you have to keep in mind when you're using these before hooks is if you wanna have access to a variable that's defined in one of these before uh, hooks, you need to put an at symbol. You need, you need to make it an instance variable so that these it uh, statements will have access to the sandwich variable. And then we'd have to go down here and add an at symbol in front of these ones as well. So at this point, we should be able to run the specs and they should work just fine, which they do. Those are the two main ways you're gonna see our spec tests cleaned up and you're gonna see duplication removed from our spec, uh, specs. But there's a third option, which is to just straight up define a method. So <clears throat> I could just define a method called a vegan sandwich. And all this would do is return a sandwich. So I'm just gonna copy this here and then I will comment that out for now and paste it down here. So when this method runs, it's just gonna return um, a new sandwich with, with a vegan properties passed in. So if I was to come up here, instead of referencing sandwich, I could just say uh, vegan sandwich uh, and replace these uh, calls to sandwich with this vegan sandwich method call, which will uh, then return this vegan sandwich, which will then get uh, test, you know, the properties of it will be tested. So this should also work right here. Um, this way isn't used quite as much, but this is definitely a good option um, if you're doing a quite complex thing and you just want to have it in a method, maybe you could put it in a separate file or something and then just import it and use it in, in your uh, specs here. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you learned how to use uh, let blocks before hooks and just regular old methods to clean up your RSpec tests. It's going to make your tests a lot cleaner and be easier to understand as well as give you some performance benefits in the case of uh, let. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Drop a comment down below. Like this video if you learned something and subscribe because I'm going to be releasing a lot more videos on RSpec in the future. So thanks a lot for watching and have a great rest of your day.